All right. Uh, I'm tired of warming up. Uh, let me share a few things with you real quick. I promise not to be long tonight. Uh, this is Brother Jamal's meeting. I know he has many uh, more important things to tell you. Uh, and uh, I just want to be brief with you. Uh, this is a uh, piece from the uh, LA Times, uh, Sunday, August 13th. Uh, it's in the travel section, advertisement supplement. Little thing talking about Hotel Griffin, Griffon, Hotel Griffon, located on San Francisco's Embarcadero. What's it called? Embarcadero. Who built it? Thank you. Rockefeller. Thank you, Baba. Rockefeller. So in Rockefeller's redevelopment center on the lake in San Francisco is the Hotel Griffon. Just file that for the anti-Griffites. Uh, I saw the sister and brother here from Oakland. Where I saw, I think I saw sister. Where's that? I see sister. Come in, the sister, and we'll be here with the brother from uh, Oakland, San Francisco area. But yeah, I know they were here Wednesday, but I thought they were here now. Okay. Anyway, I wanted to hook them up with somebody. Uh, uh, for the record, I mentioned this uh, Sunday, but I just wanna want you to look at the movie section. I'm looking in the movie section. And uh, there was a little ad in there called Indian in a Cupboard. Anybody seen the movie? Uh, my little son tells me that it's a whole lot of people in the cupboard. RoboCop is in there. They got all kind of characters. But the only one in the little white boy's hands, the only one talked about in the public is the Indian in the cupboard. Probably just a coincidence. Uh, you know whites? Uh, who are seeking to sexually advance their race. Uh, you remember uh, we talked about this story. For those of you who are here the first time, I talked to you about something I felt the movie Congo was about. Eight-man experiment described, disclosed. A new breed of subhuman slave envisioned in test. That's the subheading there. This is Chicago Tribune, May 14th, 1987. Eight-man experiments. Italian anthropologists said this week that biogenetic scientists using refined techniques of artificial fertilization are capable of creating a new breed of slave, an anthropor, anthropod, with chimpanzee mother and a human father. They took and crossbreeded a female chimpanzee with a white man. But, you know, you watched it. Now the beast, what's that say? Read that headline to me. Now the beast roars around the world. Now this is not an idol. This beast thing been dead. This is an old play. Yes, brother. Which is being re-brought re out. And uh, TNT, a Turner, or one of them stations keep showing the Planet of the Eights down there every other night. Mm. Yeah, look for that Planet of the Apes move. Now, when was the Planet of the Apes movies out? You know what years? Late 70s and through the 80s. Right at the time they was doing the ape-man experiment. Nah, probably just a coincidence. <laughs> Beauty and the Beast. Now the Beast roars round table the world. Now, New York, Los Angeles, Melbourne, Toronto, soon Vienna, Minneapolis, Tokyo, Osaka. Now the beast roars round the world. Then they had the black man and the white woman sing the song. Beauty and the Beast. What was that, People Bryson? Yeah. Mm. Now, I just, I'm looking at these movie sections. Probably it's just an accident the way this looks so much the same. I was looking at this ad, the two ads for the two movies, and shit. <laughs> they look the same. Uh, yeah. Kevin Cosner and Waterworld, and Denzel 
Denzel Robinson. Denzel Robinson. Denzel Robinson. Somebody keep telling me Washington. Uh, anyway, the ads just look a lot similar to me. I didn't quite get them. I, they're not even the same company that are making them, but the face behind the ad would be a little different here. Hmm. This little writing here, I just saw Waterworld yesterday, and uh, about the little white kid who who metaphysically was attuned to finding land. White man that had a lot of problems and he was back to looking for land. I was intrigued by that uh, concept. Uh, yeah, we found some more white land. So looked like they found Africa because when they get to the spot, it's all green and shit. Didn't look like no place in Europe. <laughs> now, uh, this is an advertising magazine, Advertising Age. Uh, this is just for the advertisers. It was in this magazine that they had that ad that time we talked about. By Hey Whitey, you'll turn at the back of the bus, where Time Magazine was taunting other whites about uh, soon uh, so-called minorities are going to run the country. At the bottom was a little thing about the hottest item uh, in uh, side sales. Uh, it's Pocahontas. It said Pocahontas sales are going wild. They're beating Lion King sales on the little artifacts. 6,000 U.S. Burger King restaurants sold nearly 8 million Pocahontas Kids Meals. 8 million Pocahontas Kids Meals. Competing against Batman Forever, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and the Lion King and the Flintstones, Pocahontas is selling roughly 10% more kids meal per week than all the others did. Hmm. Pocahontas power grows. Anyway, you remember I showed you Pocahontas the other night? What's her name? And I said that she was Pocahontas because she did what? Right? She gave New Gendricks a chance to come and preside over the destiny of Washington, D.C., by making D.C. safe for his resurrection to be looked at as that man. And that uh, she did it uh, in deference to the people of D.C. Here she is here. Uh, and remember, in the movie Pocahontas, in fact, you remember uh, that uh, the white guy had the little blondy hair. His hair was all golden because uh, he was the white man. And you see blonde hair is on the rise. It's everywhere. Um, and there's uh, golden-haired New Gendrix with Pocahontas, Eleanor Holmes Norton. Now, one thing I didn't get to read for you, because if you study these things, if you know these profiles, how many of you have in your house uh, any year book copy of uh, Who's Who in America? Anybody got some Who's Who in America in the house? Very good. That's an honorable thing. You would need, it's a book of names and connections. That's all it is, is name. You can go to a used bookstore and buy them. I bought, I got mm, four different sets, a two volumes for a particular year. And uh, they're, um, oh, they cost about two, three hundred dollars new. You can get them book sale, two, three dollars. And I tore a page out of the book. It was my book, so I work my pages. I write on them. You can see I write on my stuff. Uh, and I tore out Eleanor Holmes Norton profile from the 89 edition. And the question was, would this sound like a Pocahontas? Eleanor Norton, lawyer, educator, Washington, D.C. Uh, let's see here. Went to college at. Oh, I'm hearing you in the background. I'm hearing the voices. I hear radio. Uh, it says uh, legal, let's see, what is this? Assistant Legal Director ACLU, 65 to 70. Huh. Executive Assistant to the Mayor of New York, 71 to 74. Chairman of the Commission on Humanities, 70 to 77. Chairman of the uh, EEOC, 77 to 81. 
Senior fellow of the Urban Institute, 81 to 82. Law professor, Georgetown U, 82 to the present. On the boards of, trustee of, the Greater Washington Board of Trade, that's a very negative white group. Board of Directors of Rockefeller Foundation. Board of Directors of Yale University. Council on Foreign Relations. Winner of the Lewis Waterman Wise Award of the American Jewish Congress. Phi Beta Kappa. And a whole slew of other organizations, Board of Trustees, women's groups, legal groups, and other things. The Black Leadership Roundtable. Martin Luther King Center for Social Change. Oh, man, just a bunch of stuff. Anyway, that Yale and that Rockefeller connection strike me as somewhat interesting. Now, uh, on the board of the Ford Foundation, I mentioned the other day I was talking about the Ford Foundation, and I mentioned that Four of the directors of the Ford Foundation are on the board of the AT&T uh, phone company. And I was very intrigued about that. Uh, that AT&T uh, is uh, sponsoring Kwanzaa events. Uh, you'll see them have a big table set up tomorrow at the African AT&T Festival. They'll be out there. Who else will be out there? MCI will be out, all of them will be out there, sponsoring it. Uh, I want to know if anybody can find the protocols of Zion when they go out there tomorrow. It would be very important to make sure that it's still being sold. We haven't forgot what Yevoslavsky did. Ain't that his name? Who uh, attacked the festival for selling the protocols. And they agreed that it wouldn't be sold. So don't forget to walk around the next three weekends and ask specifically for the protocols. And uh, if you really don't want it, somebody offers it to you, buy it. I'll buy it from you. I don't need them, but I would want to support anybody. I'm going to go around there and try to buy some myself. But if I don't find any, it's going to be trouble. Now, uh, the paganization of Kemet. I had talked to you about before in that stargate and that triangle within a circle and that paganization. I read to you last time I was here uh, from the book called Stargate, the paperback. Had in the back of it a little preview of the movie. The people of the village of Nagata live in fear of their evil ruler, Ra, and they welcome Daniel and O'Neill as gods. The two white men. Somebody got a Nissan blocking somebody in. Smoke gray. ZTB. I won't read the rest. They'll know. Ra lives and travels in a luxurious pyramid-shaped craft. A shattering contrast to the world over which he rules. Daniel and O'Neill are on opposing sides of the Stargate program. But when they're not fighting each other, they realize they have a much bigger enemy to fight, Ra. Shuri has always obeyed the elders of Nagata. When Daniel teaches her the forbidden act of reading, she learns about her people, who they really are, and where they came from. Enlightened, Shari becomes one of the leaders of the rebellion against Ra. Can't say it's on CD-ROM for $39 on all other stuff. But, uh, yeah, and these things uh, remain unresponded to. Uh, are those State Department magazines floating around? Oh, they should be floating around. I asked for them to be passed around. I asked for them to be passed around. That means get them up off the table. Sure, so you can come on. There we go. You can spread them around. Y'all see them on this side of the room? No, they ain't been nowhere. All right. Uh, give, me, uh, give me two of them. I hate to say it to you, Bob. I grabbed them up on this side. I'll pass each of them this way. 
Mine must not have heard me. Hmm, something strange going on here. Y'all gonna get me all excited when I'm trying not to be. Um, speaking of, uh, speaking of uh, Kemet, uh, those who may be coming to Washington, D.C., this is a picture of something that is uh, literally right in the center. Uh, if I had a um, board or something to work with, I would uh, show you or draw you a map of D.C., which is a diamond. You know, diamond, boom, boom. That's, that's D.C. Boom, boom. Got that? Uh, part of that uh, lower left side uh, is uh, Virginia. It's annexed. It's a river in there. Cuts a little bit of that triangle off at the bottom. The other lower left side of the that, uh, lower side of that triangle is what they call southeast. That's the black side, the Anacostia side. It's not the only black side because down there the whole city black. Uh, and then you got northeast and northwest. They divide the town. Okay. Baba, you couldn't even have enough tests to know how good I was. <laughs> That's DC. Not an accident that it's a triangle. Uh, and this is uh, annexed into Virginia. This is southeast. And there's a river in here, and the river tends to cut the black people off in a way that they have to cross the bridge to get into the white side. This line right here is the center of the triangle, and this park, Meridian Park, sits right there. Meridian Park. Meridian Park, it was renamed by the Africans as Malcolm X Park. But in this story, this is Washington Times, August 4th, 1995, talking about Meridian Hill Park. It states that Meridian Hill takes its name from Thomas Jefferson. What secret society was Thomas Jefferson in? How, several of them. And, and, Rosicrucians. Meridian Hill takes its name from Thomas Jefferson's unsuccessful attempt to designate a point which is now inside the park as the zero meridian for the world. I'm going to repeat that again. Now, the zero meridian or the center spot. Anybody here from Indianapolis? Indianapolis, anybody? Okay. Thomas Jefferson saw a point in the middle of D.C. If you stand in the center park, you'll, you'll go cold cock straight with the Washington Monument. Go right up that line. I live, where I live in D.C. is right there. Metaphysically, somehow, I moved right on the top of the point. <laughs> Just strange that it happened like that, right on the top of that point. If you come and find where Coakley at, you find him right at the top of that diamond. Um, the White House is right about right there down the street from Meridian Park. Right between those two dots is the House of the Mother Supreme where Albert Pike is buried. Kind of like right there, where I put this arrow at here. Right there between the White House and Meridian Hill Park. Right down the street from there is one of the few institutions in D.C. that's totally self-sufficient. That's Walter Reed Hospital, which has its own generators, food systems and everything, Walter Reed Hospital is self-containing. Now, right over here, right over here, how many of you all, the movie before Clear and Present Danger, which was on HBO Today with Harrison Ford, the movie right before that was called, uh, what was that? Patriot Games. You remember that part in Patriot Games where they're looking in the desert at a, what they call a terrorist camp, and they're looking at it through this high-tech military satellite that was coming from Naval Reconnaissance. Naval Reconnaissance headquarters is right here where I drew this line 
Well, actually, it's right about here on the, An on the Anacostia River, separating the black people from downtown D.C. Right here, the high-tech satellite system that you saw in Patriot Games sits right here in D.C. Now, over here you got CIA, over there you got Fort Detrix, Fort Meade, uh, shit, all the army, the Pentagon sits right about right in here. Part D.C., part Virginia. Pentagon, I'm doing this backwards, I could do this better with a bigger piece. Pentagon, Albert Pike, White House, uh, a Meridian Hill, Walter Reed, Coakley, <laughs> Naval Reconnaissance, black people, Northwest, this is called Northwest DC, uh, Northwest, uh, Affluent Homes, uh, uh, the ex-mayor of DC, many of the Boule in DC live in this area. A uh, big uh, black mansions of 400,000 million homes, dollar homes. 16th Street, right. This is 16th Street right here. They're just off of that, all, actually all up and down here. A little bit on this side. This is uh, a little bit more northwest and it starts over here northeast. The separating street is called North Capitol. You go up North Capitol or South Capitol, it'll run you right into the Capitol building. Pardon me? Pennsylvania Avenue is a diagonal street that runs from the White House right here, diagonally straight into the Capitol. So you know that the Capitol, the Capitol building which is here, the White House is diagonal from it, right up Pennsylvania Avenue. That was the center street in the beginning. Where was the first Capitol of the United States headquartered? Philadelphia. Right, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That's why Pennsylvania is a key street in many cities. Now, over here, let me go back. Y'all want to know something about this? Okay, let's go back. Uh, the center, uh, White House, Albert Pike, Walter Reed, Coakley. Uh, Pentagon. Naval reconnaissance, black people. Well, let me leave the people out. Naval reconnaissance, Pentagon, White House. Right down the street from the White House. Now, Capitol building would be right here. Diagonal, Pennsylvania Avenue. It goes Pennsylvania Avenue, Department of the Treasury, White House, and then right over here, four blocks up the angle of Pennsylvania Street is the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, right up on 19th and 20th of Pennsylvania. How you doing, sister? Pennsylvania Avenue right there, World Bank. When you go there, walk inside and get the World Bank chairman's name if you go there for the Million Man Mark. World Bank, I-M-F, right there, all right? Uh, don't forget, we said, um, we got, uh, let's see, we got Fort Meade, uh, we got, uh, uh, what's the other place, Fort Detrick. What they make it Fort Detrick? All right. All right. Um, uh, you remember that laboratory that they sent the OJ stuff to? Right, right there. That laboratory that they sent that OJ genetic stuff to. What was the university that was doing the, the, the uh, genetic project to identify disruptive black males at the age of nine? You remember the white boy came right here in this room. No, that's not where the experiment was being conducted at. Where's, what's the white boy's name? No, Berrigan, Berrigan. You remember the white boy that was against it? Reagan, right, he met with the Bloods and the Crips. University of Maryland, there you go, right there. Just outside of the district is what they call College Park, Maryland. Uh, CIA. Right over here, this is, uh, uh, now CIA got a couple of spots. They got one right near Dulles Airport. Right over here, they had a building 
that was under the name of Westinghouse, which just bought. Westinghouse had a multi-million dollar building that they were fronting for, but actually it was the CIA and it got busted. They got busted. So when you think Westinghouse, when you think CBS, what's the logo of CBS? Oh, CIA. Okay. Now, so we got Pennsylvania, World Bank, IMF. Right over here is George Washington University. George Washington University is the dominant Masonic University in all the United States. The chairman or the head of George GW, as they call it, had that seven foot one black man played basketball for it. Went on into the pros real quick because he didn't like it there. Uh, anybody know his name? There you go. There you go. Say it again. Huh? Dinkadere, Dinkadere, there we go, something like that, Nigerian brother. Anyway, uh, GW is chaired by a man named Trakenberg. He's a big time Mason. George Washington University is run by something called the High 12, which is a Masonic organization. You learn about it when you go to the House of the Mother Supreme where Albert Pike is buried, which is right there. Uh, let's see here. Now, the Million Man March, the Washington Monument, and all of those things will be right about here. Right about there. Now, surrounding the area where the Million Man March is is a series of museums. It's a Smithsonian. Go all, it must be a thing, must be six blocks long. All of this, and it's different museums in there. On that side, on this side here, is another series of museums. Uh, National Archives, where all that John Kennedy assassination stuff and Nixon papers, all that is in the archives. You will want to go there. Got the uh, Natural History Museum, where they got the white man was the first man on earth exhibit. Uh, and they got uh, two more museums right there. Then over here, they got the National Museum of Black Art. They got the uh, Air and Space Museum. They got uh, some flower museum. And right over here, right on the edge of this, is the U.S. Holocaust Museum. You will want to go there. You will want to lines of black people who are there for the Million Man March will need to go to the Holocaust Museum. Could put that on your list. Holocaust Museum because they deserve for you to go there and frighten them. I suggest that on this day, maybe even all week in an unprecedented fashion, the white man gonna close all this shit. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, I suspect. Now, the Million Man March, all the people will be right in here. The march, you know, you remember Martin King at the reflector pool? He's standing there doing the I Have a Dream speech. That's over here. Right here is the reflector pool. Straight in the line with that is the Capitol building. All these things are lined up. You can look at the point of the Capitol and come right up the center of that reflector pool. You know, you got the, Jeff, the Lincoln Memorial and all that shit over there. Stuff over there. So the only place the people can be is in here. Now someone asked me if the black people had to run where would they go? Because you see, water kind of landlocks the operation. Water, this Anacostia River and the Potomac River, kind of landlocked the operation. Uh, if we were to go this way, we'd pick up the river again as it surrounds the airport, the Washington National Airport, which is over here. Dulles Airport is over here, right on this side of D.C., and BWI, Baltimore Washington Airport, is out this way, going towards between Baltimore and D.C. You will either come in one of them three airports. Now, strategically, there needs to be some decisions made about what happens if trouble breaks, and where will you go? You know, you can find Coakley at the point. <laughs> 
And your only way to get there is to come right up the center. 16th Street, one and six is what? Seven is the Masonic holy number. So remember, DC is laid real simply. The way the streets lay. How you doing, sister? Uh, the way the streets are laid. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Now, let's go back. Gotta draw one more triangle. No, you ain't gonna do it. I'm gonna be down there in the middle anyway, Baba. I'm probably gonna be arrested or something. <laughs> if not shot at. Because I ain't coming to march. Now, now, what you need to know is this. Remember the line. Now, Meridian Park is not a bad place because remember Meridian Park is between uh, the White House, then comes Albert Pike, then comes Meridian Hill Park, and then comes uh, 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 Walter Reed, then you get Coakley again. Now, uh, sidebar, for those of you who are looking for hotel rooms and other places to stay, you will find out here in the Silver Spring area many cheap hotels that you can go to and then jump right on the subway. You will not be able to park nowhere around the Million Man March. You ain't gonna be able to park, no, you can't park around there no way. Also, be on the lookout for these uh, little, uh, like Broncos. They're these Broncos, the Secret Service and the Park Police ride all over D.C. Usually it's between four and six black fatigued white men in it as they drive around the area consistently uh, using dogs to sniff cars. If a car stays parked past the meter time, they come and put the dog on it to see if it's a bomb. Uh, Clinton, he comes out and runs in these areas in the morning. So they use the dogs to sniff the cars on the running route. It was just a little insight. You see Clinton, here come Clinton, here come a van. Here come another van. Them got them air-to-ground missiles in it. You open up the back end of that van and up pops a air-to-ground missile system that's supposed to be able to protect the, the president from airplane attack. Of course, they have those same things on the top of the White House, none of which were used when the airplane crashed up on his bedroom window. Yes, <laughs> because they have it don't mean they want to use it. Now, there's another part I left out of all of this about where everybody is. Now remember, here we go. What street is that? Pennsylvania Avenue, very good. What's over here on Pennsylvania? No, Capitol's over here on this side. That's the Capitol building. What's over here? World Bank and IMF. Uh, what's right here? Right, then got the Treasury. And then uh, right on up Pennsylvania to the House and the Senate. Right next to the House and the Senate is the Supreme Court, Library of Congress. You got a bunch of key shit right over there. Like Mother Onion says, one, two, you know what to do. <laughs> now, again, here's uh, Albert Pike. There's Walter Reed. And there's who? Okay. All right. Now, over here, Pentagon, there we go, Pentagon. Over here is what? And what, what, a, what, 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 what military apparatus? The Navy. Now, when you get there at D.C. on the subway system, you see you can take a train to Pentagon City. But when you go to get off, it then has a little machine there for your clearance card to go in the machine so that you can get off at the Pentagon stop. They even have a shopping center, what they call Crystal City, going this way, and then they got Eyes only, high, secure, Pentagon people can go that way. But you can get off there, and you can stand there. And if you stand there, everybody you see going in there is probably somebody who anti-black. So if you wanted to, you could shoot all their pictures all day long. Oh, let's go back. <laughs> Made me forget about this little square. This building is a block, a block, a block, and a block. That's the FBI building. Right there, FBI headquarters. Full block long. Gag or Hoover. We can throw in the State Department. Remember this is Treasury. That's the White House. Over here is the Pentagon. 
Now, right over in here is another key part of D.C. It's called Diplomatic Row. Oh, shit. The Israeli Embassy, the French Embassy, the German Embassy, the, they're all over here in what they call Georgetown. I'm doing my G upside down. Georgetown used to be just like South Central. It was an all-black community. And the whites decided that they would buy the blacks out, so all those who didn't sell, they burned their houses. And they moved the blacks out of Georgetown, and right on the end of Georgetown, of course, you have the Georgetown University, which is a Catholic Jesuit institute. And remember Cecil Rhodes? Pattern this secret society off the Jesuits. And at Georgetown is the Georgetown Center for Strategic and International Studies. But all over there, you got all them embassies up Connecticut Avenue. All them embassies just, and every one of them embassies have their own police force. So you see Israeli police, German police, French police, Soviet police. Ukrainian police, Hungarian police, Australian, everybody has the right to their own police in a diplomatic arena. So you get a chance to see some stuff. <laughs> police in that case probably means about six or seven people at the most. Remember we always said if we just turned around, we what? Had them surrounded, check. Oh, let's see here. Uh, uh, and then, of course, I mentioned to you all them other institutions that are all around there. And the Million Man March will be right in the center. And uh, now, uh, we need food. We need water. We need toilets. How many toilets do you need for a million men? <laughs> And they're women. But the point is, you obviously, you need stuff. I mean, you need not just a few things. You need a bunch of stuff. I mean, a bunch of stuff. And uh, we need to uh, think about that. Uh, where will the people sleep who cannot sleep in a hotel? It may be that Meridian Hill Park may be one of your safest places to stay because the white people are afraid of Meridian Hill Park because of the spookiness about how it sits in the center of the town. White people are afraid of mysticism because they cannot control it. They imitate it and emulate it excessively as a part of trying to identify with extraordinary capability. Uh, and they set up many of their things based on the mystery system. Anyway, all that to say uh, that uh, if you do make it there, uh, there are many of these places that you need to go to that have tours and other things that make themselves publicly accessible to all of us. Even the FBI got a tour you can go on. House of the Mother Supreme. Right over here in Virginia side, Virginia kind of comes in like that, right over here is the George Washington Masonic Memorial Temple. With all of that stuff I show you on that video, Boulay Convention Revealed, is in that building right there. Uh, uh, so Arlington National Cemetery is over here. Uh, this whole bunch of stuff. Frederick Douglass' home and all of the black stuff is over here in Anacostia. This is where Reddick Bull from, from up in here. There was a while when we thought Reddick Bull was going to help finance the revolution. Just recently, he just bought his 16th Rolls Royce, $261,000. And him and Rock Newman, nah, they're not going to do it. There was a time when we thought they were. But they're not going to do it. When Reddick Bull saw he couldn't fight nobody if the white man didn't let him, then they learn you just didn't need to be a fighter, you need to have opportunity. Who did? Riddick Bowe, that's deep, and they also gave 50,000 to Betty Shabazz. Make sure not to mention nothing about Malcolm assassination again, ever. Uh, anyway, uh, that's the logistics on DC, and um, uh, there's some uh, highly uh, interesting things we could do if you happen to make it there. Uh, and so I, I 
uh, suggest to you that there's uh, some key stuff about that uh, that would be uh, great for all of us. Uh, now, let me uh, escalate a bit. Uh, uh, we will brief those who need it on a need-to-know basis. <laughs> Once you get there. See, ain't no need of you knowing the exit route, and you sitting over here on Crenshaw. was half the man of Marcus Garvey. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Uh, last time I was here, uh, it's in the Oklahoma bombing tape. Uh, also, again, uh, those of you who are interested uh, in signing up for Grassroots 2000, Brother Marcus. Brother Marcus. Anybody bring the dubber in? Just ask him if you brought the dubber in or not. Uh, we talked about the cameras that they put on the streets in Virginia. As they prepare for you coming, cameras will watch drivers in your Virginia where a picture is worth 50 bucks. This is Washington Post, March 13th, 95. They're setting up cameras on all the key streets in D.C. Uh, car 54, where are you? Uh, this is about the global positioning system, about the satellite thing. Now, the question came up, why don't the white boys draw the satellite pictures off the O.J. thing? If the white Bronco moved from the scene, you'd be able to pick it up on the satellite. Check. Yeah. All right. Uh, we talked about Immune Watch, where AT&T, who have four members on what foundation board of directors? No, I just want to know, did you bring the double in? Oh, there we go. Sorry, Bob. I see it back there. Thank you. Uh, AT&T has four members on the board of directors of what? Boy, y'all need y'all butt whips. The Ford Foundation. Okay. Uh, immune Watch System. It's about the uh, AT&T giving Howard 40000 to go out and identify every child that has not been immunized. High-tech phone system. And you will get called and harassed until you do, saying that they're working on legislation that will make it illegal for a parent not to have their child be immunized. Just like it's illegal for a parent not to submit their child to the miseducation system. Check? Yes. Right now, that was uh, that was for the uh, smoke emissions or the right because I have up here the article on that, which is one of the things I would have showed you. Uh, what they call I think in my story, which was from doing it on the East Coast, uh, it had an interesting name to it, a uh, real sneaky type of name uh, called uh, smoke cops. The smoke cops. Uh, and uh, if I see it just this second, I'll show it to you. But the reason I was showing you this, uh, they put listening devices on the street corners in D.C. Along with the cameras, now they're putting high-tech listening devices on the street corners. In fact, let me tear the story open this way. How the system would work, which is now in use already, showing how they would put high-tech listening devices on the street corners, which they already did, uh, the mayor had asked for the National Guard to come out and patrol against drugs. So since they didn't get it, they got the, uh, they got the uh, listening devices. It cost $200,000 per corner to set up a, a video system to send those, uh, send those uh, tickets to those people who drive through a traffic light. Uh, I think that the maintenance is all in the uh, process. Don't forget we talked about the uh, 
info packs, the tagging of the dogs and the cats. Uh, don't forget we talked about the barcoding of the stuff, everything that's on a train, including the train tracks. I mean the train, uh, the train, uh, the train itself uh, has a barcode on the wheel system that tells a barcode reader in the train track line when a certain train has crossed a certain point, much like truck drivers have to do now with their truck. Hand images help detect welfare fraud. The old, let me see the mark in the palm of your hand operation, which is being practiced in many public housing projects. Uh, uh, here we go, here we go. This is the, uh, the one that ran in Maryland, Brother Kevin, uh, Sunday, May 14th. Uh, it's called Phoenix Program Identifies Polluters. They call it the Phoenix Program. Uh, High-tech tools focus on autos. A half dozen white vans packed with computers and sensors developed for a missile system have joined the war against air pollution. Tell me how they own the corners, the smog dogs, they call them. <laughs> now that leads me to these two points. I've said all of that just to say this. Internet, it's all in the mind. While some of you put yourselves in the position of advocating on behalf of the internet, the internet now with the screen and the finger operatable top is not where they're going. The internet that they're setting up is really going to be put right in the back of your neck. The chip will go in your neck and your brain can send a signal to an operative machine and the machine will respond without uttering a mere word. Right, it's shown in Virtuosity. They put a tracker in his body with a Sinai release system in it in case he misbehaved. Just like the movie Fortress where they put the ball inside of the stomach of the prisoner. And every time the prisoner misbehaved, they turned up some sort of juice on him and made him bend all over. These are going to be in South Central soon. Internet. Is it the next computer you buy may be the last one you will need. Now remember we're talking about forming glo a Grassroots 2000 to be countering Global 2000 and those who are interested again can come and sign up at the end or uh, if somebody got a, there we go, if you want to sign up for Grassroots 2000 put your name and phone number on here uh, and let me stick a pen in there. I know sister you give me your pen. Let me stick, I I use this pen and have the ID. Doodle, doodle. <laughs> Uh, name and phone number where we're going to work on the future. Again, I told you, part, this, is about, but this is for uh, Grassroots 2000 to work directly with Brother Steve at the front text. I say this clearly, the front text. Or the code is that we're going we're gonna to look at the future. In reality, we're going to change the future, but we're going to start off by looking at it. And I suggested that if you looked at it clear enough, you would you would have greater fuel for ch changing today when you saw up ahead, like where this stuff is going. British researchers are among the international teams working on an implant to translate human thought into computer language. In generation, in a generation, one group says people with a peppercorn-sized chip in the back of their necks will be able to talk to machines. The idea is being developed by academic and military scientists in Britain and America, centers on a device to read the mind and translate instructions into a computer code. Now you remember in the movie Demolition Man, the two people use something to have sex mentally. You remember that? Yeah, something like that. They needed the glasses. Huh? Oh, and Sleeper, right. Very interesting movie, too. Sleeper had some interesting things. And the little ball, the pleasure ball, and other things. Uh, how Descent was dealt with and other things. Very interesting flick. Um, Woody Allen, like uh, uh, Obi, don't have black people in their movies. You, you, you be all week looking for a black man in Obi movies. Uh, what's his name? Ron Howard. He don't have black people. Apollo 13, uh, and nowhere. You don't see no black people in that, uh, black draft. Huh? Mate, right, right, all the way to Mayberry, you don't see no black people. 
The idea of blah, 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 commercial code, blah, 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 military uses there. The teams on both sides of the Atlantic are working on commercial and military uses. Air Force pilots, for instance, will be able to fly aircraft and fire missiles by electronic telepathy, using the chip to send instructions to the plane's computer. The team has overcome two big obstacles. It has extended the chip's life in the body from a matter of days to more than a year before wiring decays. It has also learned how to fuse the device with nerve endings, which can attack a pain apparatus to it. These developments depend on people educating themselves to control their thoughts and use brain waves in a controlled manner. Made me think about the way biofeedback lines your brain wave up to a machine so you can know how to settle your body down. Anyway, now you remember we talked about the net and how in the movie the net, the, yes brother, quickly. Fortress. Uh, in the movie the net, which is out now, we remember that the uh, virus is called pi, the, the dot with the slash on it. And it's hidden in Mozart's ghost. It's called Gatekeeper. And Gatekeeper was in fact the virus itself, though it was disguised as the insurance against a virus. Well, these type of programs have come forth in real life. And I told you that the person in that movie looked a lot like Michael Gates of Microsoft. 37 year old, young, huh? Bill Gates, there we go, Bill Gates. And the fact that Gates, that the program he was selling was Gates Keeper. Anyway, uh, in the uh, PC week, March 27th, 95, uh, they were talking about uh, something, uh, a powerful free tool not only finds holes, but also fix them. This is a system that gets you out of, look at there, look at that, look at this shit. Oh man, this is deep. FTP Gatekeeper. Code name, Satan. Satan, a blessing for the internet. Powerful, they made Satan free. Satan, you put on your computer, will tell you where your computer is vulnerable. It's a code cracker. It's the, it's the evil disguised as the code cracker. It's really the tabulator. That makes sense? All of it is, there's no black computers out here. Every organization connected to the internet has a date with the devil on April 5th. This is from PC Week, March 27th, 1995. When Satan is unleashed, but the engagement will be likely to be beneficial. PC Week Labs examined the beta copy of Satan, System Administrator Tool for Analyzing Networks a free Unix-based tool that has touched off criticism from systems administration for its ability to examine any network connected to the internet and uncover security holes. Don't that sound like Gatekeeper? But right up under here, it's coded on the internet as Gatekeeper. But it's sold as Satan. Now I've been told that due to pressure on the word Satan, they changed the name to Santa. Which is another name for the same damn thing. Saint Nick, Nimrod, Santa, Pike, all of that mean the same. Remember in the movie, The Omen 3, when he's talking about the devil, he looks over and he's talking about Saint Nick. And he says it right in the thing. He said, it looks a little like Albert Pike. That's deep. The code phrase is here. On April 5th, Satan will be available at several locations on the internet, including FTP slash gatekeeper, FTP slash security, FTP slash demon, FTC slash uh, security. It says NASA government security. That's deep. That's deep. Now, huh? Did a report on it? What'd they say? It was being edited out. That the data was going to go in. Everybody. Better get with it and shit, huh? Yeah. Get with the Satan. That's deep. Probably nothing to that. 
Probably if Satan is coming through the computer system, it probably mean nothing. <laughs> now, this picture here looks a lot like, now you know, we, we're constantly, the other night we made another key find. This picture and this picture look a little alike. This book I was unaware of. Uh, we, we, we come by the other night. Brother Marcus, I think it was, was it after the lecture we went there? Uh, on an off day. He said, you need to go by the newsstand. This has got to go by the newsstand. These are uh, super newsstands and just find stuff you don't normally get access to. Biblical Archaeological Review, uh, volume 21, number 4, July, August, 95 contains something similar to the Grecian Sphinx, which is on this side. And uh, this, uh, in the biblical book, says that these things were found, they try not to talk too much about Kemet, you know, this is a white thing, so they say this, this thing is associated with philosophy, but the Greeks were the first one to be philosophical, said the Kemetans uh, did use philosophy, but they were concrete in their philosophy. You could live their philosophy. The Greeks, you had to imagine it. Um, but this, this was also spoke of, this was also spoke of in the magazine as a cherubim. Anybody familiar with what that means? Cherubim, God's throne. Now what intrigues me, and see here, God's throne, a new ivory cherub, cherub. And it talks about the history of this picture here. Now remember, the Grecian Sphinx is the body of the lion, the uh, tail of a, of, a, of, a, of a lion or an ox, the face of a woman, the wings of a bird. Uh, now, they even have a picture here of the Asian version where usually the face looks directly at the person, like this one. This is an Assyrian version. Oh, we getting deep in the shit now. Right. In here is a whole series of biblical listings about the cherubim who were on both sides of the what? Brother Keaton? Was on the both sides of the what? Thank you, Brother Keaton. <laughs> Sister said, what was the answer? Tell him, tell him, Cliff. They're next to the Ark of the Covenant, which means they were protected of something related to Solomon and the whole building of the temple and other things. But it's distinctively comedic. In here, when the brothers go and take the same literature, they go and put the female face in, a white female, and they make it Greek. But it mentions very here that the, the Greek made these things guardians while in Kemet, they served other relationships more related to representing the throne of the king or the queen in Kemet, but it was a guardian in Greece or a sphinx-like thing. So uh, I'll spend a little bit more time on Sunday talking about this. Uh, but interestingly enough, it says that from the 9th or 8th century BCE, the five by four inch plaque, five by four inch plaque. We remember that the Grecian Sphinx is keyed on the number nine. They're saying that the process of laying out the mantle must be five by four to make it correct. Probably just a coincidence. It says they, these were placed guarding the Garden of Eden after Adam and Eve were expelled. To the east of the Garden of Eden were placed the cherubim, Genesis Third chapter 24 verse mentions the Ark of the Covenant, mentions the Lord of Hosts, mentions the difference between ancient man and current man. These mystic creatures vary in their characteristics, but their intent is the same, to express something beyond human limitations. And uh, it has a discussion here about when they're male or female, and when they have wings or have no wings at all. This is the part I want to read to you. Originally, this wing sphinx was entirely covered with a gold leaf. It comes from Nimrod.
What do Nimrod mean? The devil. Thank you. Don't be weak on the devil. Let me just say devil. Let me just say devil. Whites. Let me just say devil. Whites. <laughs> All right. I highly recommend that you get this uh, current issue of the Emerge because it has a section in there about studying, studying black studies, uh, which matched the story I was telling you about uh, that was in uh, the um, Library of Congress magazine about black studies. Now, why would two magazines at the same time do two extensive studies about black studies? And this, my suggestion is this, that even though black studies does not teach you to fight against the recolonization of Africa, even though black studies don't teach you to name the names of the enemy, even though black studies don't teach you nothing about the World Bank, the IMF, or any level of white power, even as innocent and as harmless as it is, whites are lining it up for attack. That's what this is about. It's not about clarifying it so you could be in it. This is about attacking it, telling other whites what the impact of Afrocentrism could be if blacks come with a no compromise sense about it, which is not its present nature. It's an accommodative nature. Will you let me have a chapter in your white book called Negro's Contribution to the Development of White Satanic America? Anyway. Uh, Asante is called the father of Afrocentrism. And there's an argument in here between the Afrocentrists about whose university really has Afrocentrism or who has front Afrocentrism. And they rate each other's Afrocentric institutions. Now, what Asante does is train more than any of them as they then come out in the public and they get dispatched to these various cities. I go to New Orleans. There's an Asante student dispatched to New Orleans to head Afrocentrism curriculum. But the people in New Orleans didn't want that black, and they blocked her out as being sent from out of town and came in with a cooperative dialogue with the whites. They blocked her out and got a New Orleans. But deep within the Afrocentric study is, is that it must be, and see there's a Manning Marlboro at Columbia. They mentioned Cornell West. They mentioned Henry Louis Gates. That's the owner of Cornell West's contract at Harvard. And uh, in each of these, each of them argue. It gives a listing of how many people are coming out of these institutions, how black studies are structured. 59 black study departments, 140 black study programs, four institutes, institutes. 12 centers, or what they like, multicultural centers. They turned the one in Minnesota into multicultural. Black study degrees granted in 94, 95, BA 75, MA 22, PhD 8. That ain't many. Now, when I was at University of West Virginia, I met with the teachers who do Afrocentrism. They told me that basically they go Karinga, Asante, Carter G. Woodson, Karinga, uh, uh, one last book in there at the end that they get, and they basically teach them. Now, anybody got the book Introduction to Afrocentrism by Asante? What? Anybody got it? One. None. Two. What is in the book? All right. Anybody else? The book is talked about here as being a short book that has become the foundation for Afrocentrism. I just want to know from somebody who has it or read it, what, a, what is the foundation of Afrocentrism? I mean, of course, we know that the world started another place. Afrocentrism is our world, and we want to work off our world. I mean, they, they do that in here. That, I don't know. Go ahead. Right, and I'm the destroyer of the system. I want to see it destroyed. Anyway, I'm not, that's not to put nobody down, but uh, I, the same thing with the Black United Front, asking for independent institutions, then saying they're selling Afrocentrism to the white schools and stuff. Uh -huh. Anyway, uh, uh, there's a big discussion in here about that. You should zero in on the discussion. This one here talks about J.A. Rogers. It talks about Diop. 
It talks about uh, uh, the white boy. Uh, what's that white boy wrote that book? They give him all the credit for Afrocentrism. Uh, huh? Yeah, all the, all the whites say he's the main man. He's the one that did the thing of things. Of course, that's, we saw that coming. Uh, but then the key part to this story on Afrocentrism, it says Afrocentrism is to blacks what the militia is to whites. The suggestion is that Afrocentrism is no more than an adaptation, no more than right-wingism is to the white boy. And that's the way they ride it all the way out in the story is Afrocentrism is like a right-wing thing, only it's black people doing it. Uh, I found that very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, and so I highly recommend you uh, deep in on those. Now, the last thing I want to share with you uh, quickly and uh, we got to do two things. Two, we got to uh, have a little hat passing, and we got to pass the hat for the good life. And uh, I want to make sure that uh, we can do it quickly. Uh, again, the hat passing is for only those who can do something. It's not uh, any pressure or mandatory on anybody. Baba, you're going to have to do it. I'm going to keep talking. Uh, uh, and I got to talk quick. Uh, don't forget about the process by which the black man helps the white man against the other white man. That's a really nice picture of Colin Powell, ain't it? I mean, look at that drawing. That's a nice drawing. What's in the background of his picture? What do you see in the background of it? You see the Capitol building, which is Masonic, and you see the obelisk, which is Masonic. That's very important that in the background, to duplicate Washington, they put the Masonic thing there. Again, that's the Copley donation basket there. If you can, uh, please do. Uh, again, I mentioned about the $50, $100 a month club. Uh, those who would make such a donation, I'm going to start a personal relationship with you. I'm going to send you some dialogue about what we're doing during the month. I also have a system set up in D.C. where I'm going to start making a studio tape, a tape without the audience. Uh, many times in the lecture we do in the public, people ask questions and we go off in different directions. And... Uh, um, uh, in lieu of that, uh, we um, uh, are going to start doing a few studio things where we just stay on a particular subject for about an hour and a half, and we're going to start sending these tapes out around the country. And uh, look out for that. Uh, that'll be coming uh, real shortly. Uh, this uh, last piece I wanted to share with you uh, is um, about Africa. Uh, two little stories I think you're going to be very amused with. Uh, one of the stories is uh, uh, about Winnie Mandela. This is a deep. This story is really deep. This is going to stun. Is it? Anybody got this story? It was in the New York Times Sunday Magazine. You want all? Okay. Okay. Uh, New York Times Sunday Magazine. Uh, Winnie Mandela. It says the anti-Mandela. Nelson stands for tolerance, the free market, democracy, the dream of South Africa as a liberal Western-style nation. Winnie stands in his way. That's the story. Right. Go Winnie. There you go, Baba. The anti-Mandela is the name of the story. She was on the front page of the picture. They had their two faces looking like they were clashing against each other. But what's in the story is double D. Uh, uh, I was giving a little background on Winnie. She's talking about she's reading a speech to the African royalty. She's talking to the kings and queens of Africa who have been the products of their own tribe. And she's telling them about how her husband disrespects them. She says, Queen Elizabeth brought her ass down here. And my husband got all of South Africa out there dancing to her tune. While he's over there, I'm over here with you, the African kings, the one he won't acknowledge, the ones he won't respect. We miss anybody with the Coakley donation bag. Yeah, down here in the front. I noticed the donation bag wasn't too popular tonight. Uh, here's a couple, one and two there. Again, for those who want to write the checks, we'll talk about that personally. Uh, it says that uh, the heart of the speech recounts the humiliation of the chiefs and kings under the uh, rule of the British colonialists. In exquisite detail, she recalls how the forebearers of her audience were displaced, imprisoned, betrayed, and slaughtered. She likens the British to the Nazis. 
and wonder why to this day there has been neither compensation nor apology. In a shrewd and rattling speech with a sting in a tail, for where was Nelson Mandela on that very day but treating uh, the Elizabeth of Britain on her royal visit to South Africa? Miss Mandela, without mentioning her husband's name, has painted him as a toady of white authority. Miss Mandela is a volcano of grudges and vendettas. I am too. How many people in here got grudges and vendettas against the enemy? All right. If Nelson Mandela has invested his political capital in a policy of forbearance and compromise, his wife uses her fame to stir bitterness often against those within her own movement who she perceives as enemies. If Nelson is about the closest thing the world has yet to produce a heartfelt non-racialist, Winnie is a divider, a polarizer, a vividly aware that non-racialism is still more of a wish than a reality. If Nelson Mandela is loved, Mrs. Mandela is feared. Hail to the queen. That's right, hail to the queen as she's called by African royal. It says, together in hand, in hand, with our boxes and matches and necklaces, we shall liberate this country. That's right. The white man then goes on to say that the necklace is a form of execution in which a crowd pinions the prey inside a tire, drowses it with gasoline, and turns the victim into a horrible flaming scarecrow. Check. Then goes on to talk about Miss Mandela having to go to court over the kidnapping of somebody that she whipped a necklace on, they allege. Then goes on, has an interesting, interesting uh, little remark here. It says, uh, the black undercast is the core, the black underclass is the core of Miss Mandela's constituency, but not the limit of it. She has followers among black intellectuals, businessmen, who resent the way whites make the rules of the economy and dominate the social discourse and who enjoy the way she makes whites squirm. <laughs> she is a favorite of restive pro prospectus youth, prospectless youth, especially vigilantes of the township self-defense units who are convinced Miss Mandela has stuck up for them when the movement's fuddy-duddies duddies wanted them to disarm. The former guerrillas of the ANC underground army, many of them now integrated into the new National Defense Force, are an important source of support. A union leader told her, told me, she is much admired by the legions of unskilled migrant workers who dig South Africa's gold and coal. Women, except those who know her well, treat her as an icon. It says she rallied about her own persecution by hostile fascist judges and the gutter media and the enemies closed in sheepskin of our liberation movement. On the eve of the political miracle, her theme was unrelenting vengefulness. See, the whites know when, they, when you don't want reparation. They know that. Says here, in closing, uh, we need another basket. Where that basket at? There we go. Is it empty? Okay, uh, somebody back there needs to pass the hat for the good life. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Ed back there. Uh, Brother Kevin, would you do it? And when you pass that basket for the good life, make sure you take it back there to sister at the counter. And please, those of you that can, uh, make a donation for the good life. I'll make one myself, uh, as I did the other night. Yes, sister. That was for Steve Coakley. Light blue Honda. What's wrong? We got the wrong bag? Uh, no, that was for Brother Coakley. You want me to take it out and give it to the good life? Is that from you? Oh, I wish you had made that donation for coming in. You said you didn't have no money. Oh, thank you, Bob. I appreciate it. That's funny, brother. Ain't no $5 bill in here. There's one. You put this in there? You put this in there? Okay, take and put that in the good life basket.
They got it. He got it. Uh, the donation totally is uh, right. Uh, it's uh, forty fifty one dollars. Uh, now uh, says here. Oh, now where that good life basket at? Okay, make sure it gets around. Do what you can, please. Um, Winnie Mandela talks about uh, how they run in the rainbow, blah, blah, blah. Now, it's key point. White folks add up two things. What would it take? White folks add up two things. What would it take to have? What would it take to have an, says, this is a, this, now this is New York Times Sunday Magazine. What, what story did the New York Times Sunday Magazine write that you love? 